I am the Thunder001, one of the Goose Game runners. Uh, I'm Tasselfoot. I've been running Goose Game since day one. Got to showcase it at AGDQ about a year and a half ago, the last in-person event. Um, I've worked in video games for more than a decade uh, and like to play them very, very quickly, especially indie stuff. So just as a little intro for our viewers, uh, tell us your story. How long have you two been speedrunning and what got you started? Yeah, share our cute meat, Thunder. <laughs> uh, let's see, it, was, it wasn't even in speedrunning or how we met. It was, it was during, oh yes. It was for <laughs> one of the games you developed, that's right. Uh, so I met Tass, oh my God, years ago already. God, I, time flies. Um, but met him uh, while I was doing voluntary QA for a game, uh, Never Give Up. Um, and I just kept on submitting bug reports and all that. And uh, then we started to talk. And then I started to watch his streams and then uh, started to speedrun his game. Which then led to speedrunning yeah. Goose with me as well. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of a wild ride that um, I design games and stuff as one of my jobs and Thunder was super, super helpful um, and very passionate and uh, we've been friends for, for a few years now. So you've both been running Untitled Goose Game individually on your own. What gave you guys the idea to come up together with the, for the co-op run? Was it from the moment that the co-op update dropped? Like who approached you for this? Uh, I approached Thunder for it. Um, there, there might be a little bit of bitterness in the community. Um, so basically it was September of last year, uh, the one year anniversary of Goose that the co-op update dropped. It also coincided with the PC embargo lifting. It was one year exclusive on Epic. So when it uh, dropped on Steam, it also dropped with the co-op update. Uh, I took off work that day to start playing around with co-op speedrunning. Um, and it, it was not amazing at first, uh, in my opinion. Using Steam Remote Play had some issues. Um, one of the, actually now I kind of really like it, the routing challenges is that the two geese have to be within a specific radius of each other, which provides um, some some fun, some 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 wild moments, some frustrations. Uh, but myself and, and another runner who's actually going to be doing commentary for our speed run on for GDQ, Ritz Blues, uh, has been really active in routing. And so Ritz and I started routing and working on doing hundred percent because he's he's big into Hundo specifically. Um, and, and it kind of just went from there. And when we were going for GDQ, uh, Thunder is right there with me at the top of the leaderboards and felt like a, a really nice fit that we could showcase the run as best as possible. It goes without saying that, and you kind of touched on it by mentioning the routing, it sort of goes without saying that the strats for a solo goose run wouldn't necessarily apply to a co-op run. So how do the strats change when you're running together? versus solo whenever it comes to that it's you it's you, you're pretty much worried about yourself and the npcs uh co-op definitely brings in the new element of you having to worry about your the person you're running with uh as there's been there's been of course many occasions where we're ending up where someone's doing something and we're questioning why are you doing this <laughs> why are you grabbing boot why are you clipping why are you doing that um but with it comes with some very unique um stuff we've been finding mostly because with the solo you have a set route and you can get certain timing and there's a rhythm to it um with co-op hondo we've been finding like a lot more unique situations or just weirdness that the game does when there are two geese present um so there's a lot of like just trying to figure that stuff out but also as Sass mentioned before there is the limited uh, there's the limited distance in which you can go between each other. You can be next to each other, but after a certain uh, after a certain rate, the game stops you. So there's a lot of coordination on making sure we're in the same distance. One is able to do something, and the other is able to also do something, or having to wait so that that other person is can complete whatever they're doing. What part of the game is most likely to kill a co-op run? Like. Everything could be going great, but what's the one part that just wrecks everything? Is it just an NPC being uncooperative or is it or is it something else? 
I think there's two things. Uh, Thunder, you can, if you have a different opinion on this, um, the garden in, in the, which is the first area of the game is the least consistent, I think for every single category due to um, the groundskeeper, their RNG, they can basically go to about eight or nine different positions and they can do about four or five different things. They have the most freedom of any NPC in the game. Uh, and that usually can create problems. And because it's at the beginning of the run, it um, you just reset from smaller time losses. Um, the second one is uh, part of the route that we started doing recently is called one reset, um, which means that in the 100% route, you have to get speed tasks. You have to complete um, all of the main tasks of an area within seven minutes. And that bell, that seven minute bell resets uh, if you reset the area. Now resetting the area is slow. It messes up a whole bunch of things. Uh, so we have started doing a route that only has one reset in the middle of it. So we do the first two areas, then we reset and we do the second two areas and we only have seven minutes to do each of those. The first two, uh, there's about two minutes of, of leeway. It's, it's fairly consistent where we reset in garden, uh, but the back garden and pub, it's, it's tighter. Uh, there's harder tricks that we both need to be pulling off. Um, in pub, there's six NPCs to deal with and um, things can go wrong. And that's uh, a very large time loss and also probably the, the biggest and most challenging aspect. I think the, I can relax um, when we get past that part. How important I absolutely agree oh, on that. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I feel like pub is like, Pub is, I feel like, the main area for when things go wrong or when the run is going to end because all sorts of shenanigans seem to happen there. With uh, Garden, it's just, it feels like it's RNG. With Pub, anything goes. It, it, it's, just, it's just chaos and we embrace it. How important is timing and communication for a co-op boost game run? It's, it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think for sure that if we're not communicating, we, I think we've gotten pretty good that we know what we're doing when things go right, but it's when something goes wrong um, that we have the experience and communication to be able to try to correct it as quickly as possible and ideally save a run that we're doing in a marathon where we can't reset um, and just, just having the practice and the backups. But um, I think I'm the angry one of the two of us. Thunder is is more calm and, and reserved. And, you know, I, I I think I've apologized a few times for potentially getting a little salty and annoyed uh, at mistakes that happen. Sometimes my fault, sometimes his fault, uh, sometimes neither of our fault, but it's it's definitely all about just being able to, to talk to each other. So we've talked about like what makes everything harder, but now I want to go the other way and say, what part of running running Goose Game together is easier as opposed to running it individually? Definitely, you go through. You can go through the areas a whole lot faster. There's, oddly enough, less you have to worry about. I mean, there's still everything you have to worry about because if something goes wrong, you got to pick up, you got to distract or pick up some sort of um, piece in order so that the rest of the run can go along. Uh, but just being able. But just having to worry about your own things, if everything is going right, it's just, it's a whole lot less. Um, it just makes things easier because you have less to worry about. You know what you need to do. You know, you know what your job is. You don't have to do a thousand different things uh, to achieve the same uh, end goal. So that for me definitely makes it easier. Just 500 things. Um, I think post game, uh, because we can carry two things at once, that's what makes everything faster. Um, but post game has a lot of just, it's all clean up and it's all moving stuff from one area to another area, which is just slow. And you have to keep going back and forth between areas. So because of having two of us, I think it saves like three minutes just in post game uh, because we can cut out going to areas multiple times. And in one spot, we're carrying five items between the two of us, uh, which is a, a feat to behold that I'm sure uh, is going to be very not exciting. It's the least exciting part of the run, even though it sounds uh, pretty cool. It's not. So Goose Game is a, a GDQ crowd favorite. Tass, you mentioned that you ran it at AGDQ 2020. That was before all of this went down. And with the pandemic where it is, you know, SGDQ is going online this year. Overall, how do, you, how do you compare running a game in an online space versus running it in front of a live audience? 
Uh, it's not gonna be the same. Um, I, I, I said it during my run at AGDQ and I, I, you feel like a little bit like a rock star when you're on the stage and everybody's cheering and you know, you know that you've got that live audience. So it's not quite the same. I think um, for us with a co-op run, it's, it's even more so like, I would really, really like to be sitting next to Thunder in person, like doing this together. Um, and instead we have to do kind of a, a jank setup, technical setup where Thunder is using, like we're using Parsec for Thunder to remote desktop into my PC uh, because Goose is, is local co-op only. Um, and so despite the fact that we're on other sides of the United States, uh, we're still able to play together in spite of not being in person, but it, it would have been really cool to, to do it in person. Thunder is running is running Goose Game in person a personal goal for you? I mean, it'd be fun. Like, I do want to go to like an in person event at some point, and Goose Game would be a ton of fun to see uh, the community because that's that's the that's the amazing thing with about in person events is that you're a if if you go to them, you can meet so many different people and so many different communities, and and then not only are you bonding over just like. The aspect of you're all there to speed run and have like an amazing time and do amazing work for charity and you're also just finding awesome people that like have similar interests uh, outside of speed running or do they do something cool or you just it, there's definitely a little more connection which i do want to get want to experience at some point and especially with a uh, goose game that would be absolutely awesome especially with the entire goose community there again so if this run goes well, what's next for you two? Do you do you keep the team together? Is there or is there another game that you might consider running together at a future GDQ event? For me, I I don't know about other co-op stuff. Um, the games that I choose to speed run, they kind of just hit me. I play a lot of stuff casually, and if I get inspiration and am interested in speed running it, I'll pick it up. Um, I, I personally um, would really like to have a race uh, between myself and Thunder and a couple other top runners at a, a future GDQ. I feel like that's that's the next step uh, in terms of showcasing the game. Um, I would like to, sh to do a single player 100% as, as a race, but uh, you know, bring it on and, and whoever wants to join with it. But uh, being able to show off something else, um, I've submitted a few other games to GDQ that, that haven't yet been accepted, but we'll we'll keep on working with those. That's uh, my personal goals. I don't know about Thunders. Uh, probably would just continue on with Goose doing more because there's, I, I feel like I've only scratched the surface because there's there's an entire category extension off to the off to the side that I haven't even touched, and I'm sure Tass will be very happy if i break a couple records and have him come back to some of those yes please give but, me incentive um, to run yeah dumb categories uh but probably like continue on and improving and checking out other games as well um because it's always fun to have variety and there's always ama amazing games to show out like um mighty goose or hollow knight um some of my favorites i've been looking at all right, well, best of luck to bo the both of you. Uh, where can our viewers find you on Twitch? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Tasselfoot. Twitch.tv slash Thundar001.